What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite and today I'm going to show you dudes five different designs that you can make with the brand new portable spotlight here in Generation Zero. This highly customizable light source was added in the base support pack just yesterday and serves to be one of the most customizable items that we can utilize in our base building as of this date. So I thought it would be really awesome to take these lights and come up with five different designs uh, that you utilize all of the customizable functions that these lights offer. So as I said, from its light to its height to the tilt and the motor, you can customize this spotlight and change up the way the spotlight is going to be casting light throughout your base. And there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can utilize these different colored lights, different angles, and different heights to create some really awesome base designs, and uh, just more aesthetic functions for your base. Now let's flip things over on to nighttime so that we can show these lights off in their fullest form. There we go, that's more like it. So today I'm going to show you five designs, then we're going to break down how they're built so that you can build them for yourselves. Now with my first design, I wanted to make a build that utilized the lights but didn't customize them too much, but just utilize them as they are. Because currently in Generation Zero right now, the lights don't save what you set them to, so if you change the colors or any of the settings on it, you'll have to redo that as you head into your base each time. Hopefully in the future though, these guys will save the settings that you put onto them. So, working with that in mind, I made this little military medical camp. This camp uses pretty much everything from the pack in its little uh, perimeter. As well, I also wanted to make a kind of poor man's concrete camp, in which case this looks like a concrete camp, but doesn't actually utilize any concrete to build it. I also wanted to keep this thing kind of small so that that way you dudes could build it really easily in your bases and not have to put a lot of time or energy into it. And I want to know, if you want to see more builds like this, let me know in the comments down below because I could make a ton of them. So let's walk you dudes through this simple perimeter here. You start off with a small wall and then you go to one of the Soviet small pylons, another small wall, and then another two. That way you've got three in a row, another Soviet small pylon, another three walls, Soviet pylon, wall, leave a gap so that that way you have a way to access the place, another Soviet small wall, another pylon, another wall, and then another gap so that that way you can again get into the place. Then you'll want to place lanterns at each of the four corners, just facing outwards. Then we're going to take our sniper towers, place one in behind the lantern off at the side where we left an entrance, and then take two of them and place them on the sides of the lanterns along the left-hand wall. You should wind up with a single line gap at the front entrance as well as in between the two sniper towers here. Then we're going to take the medical trailer, flip it around, and place it down. Then afterwards, you have a little bit of extra space left over in order to place uh, a few more items in. Maybe an outhouse, maybe some extra lighting, uh, but it's just a bit of extra room for you to kind of personalize this little uh, military encampment. And with three sniper towers overlooking this area, it's actually rather fortified and base defense worthy, especially if you load up these sniper towers with 50 BMG and then you just kind of hang out around the medical trailer getting continuous healing from like adrenalines or something like that. Good to go. Speaking of good to go, what about a jukebox lounge that you could go to to AFK at or maybe just kill some time and figure out what you're going to do next in the game? This totally aesthetic build utilizes hidden lighting, the jukebox to provide the tunes, as well as scaffolding to create an upper level. Making a secondary utilization of the scaffolding to cast shadows across the area, creating a little bit moodier of an environment. 
You're able to choose the lighting that you like, whatever color you wish, in order to create the kind of mood and atmosphere that you want to have inside of this area. And I'm looking forward to the future where we'll have more decorative items that we can place into these types of locations to further fill them out. But for now, the base support pack is an incredibly awesome step in that direction. So to start out, you'll have a wall with the flat end facing outwards. This is going to help with the scaffolding later on, and the wall on the other side is just completely mirrored to this one. Then you're going to come over with a pylon, a gap, and then two pylons just beside that, with the light sitting in the middle. Then on the back end, you're going to come across with two pylons, a light, a pylon, wall with the flat end facing outwards again, pylon, light, and then two more pylons. After mirroring the first wall on the left hand side, you're going to take tall walls and put them in behind the lights, creating a kind of flush backdrop for them. Then on the inside, you're going to take small pylons and put them into the far corners, and these are going to again help with the scaffolding as you're walking around. Then you're going to take your scaffolding and you're essentially just going to line along the wall with the wood side facing inwards. They'll come across evenly just like that. Then you're going to take the wood side inwards again and just put one on either side. And then afterwards you're going to put a ramp leading on upwards. After you get both of those ramps in place, that's pretty much it. Boom, done. You'll want to place your jukebox in afterwards, centered in the room, just off that middle set of scaffolding. And then afterwards, uh, you can enjoy your build. The easiest way to AFK in these builds is by going prone. You do still have to be aware of wandering machine spawns though, uh, because they will start attacking your base. With us now having the ability to build multiple bases, you could start off with this jazz lounge and build off of it to build yourself a kind of more aesthetic base as opposed to a base that you'd be doing defenses from. Speaking of aesthetics, why not have a tunnel that has shifting lights? Using a bit of distance to create a couple ranges of strength allows you to create different levels of light that you can have cascade through a tunnel, and it looks really, really vibin'. The setup for this one is really, really simple. You'll place down your first light, and then you'll come at a diagonal of three, place down your next light, diagonal of three, place down your next light, and then if you want, you could go outwards, but I like to go inwards from this point to kind of create a bit of an ebb and flow to the light strength. So then again, you go at a diagonal of three to reconnect your next two sets of lights. Just from utilizing the diagonals and distance, you create different strengths of light. Then all you have to do is set up a bunch of different colors for the lights to shift through in the tunnel, and you're pretty much set. Now you can use whatever tunnel you like for this kind of shifting light tunnel, but I'll show you dudes the design that I came up with. So I came out by one and planted down a pylon and then had a gap of one in between each of my pylons going down the row. Then in the gap that you made in between the first light and the first pylon, place down a small wall in between those two. Follow that along the row and then boom, there you go, tunnel done. Make a little bit of an overhang extending past the lights with the wall just a little bit and that will keep things looking a lot more clean. And you could box off these lights too, but I find that this uh, tunnel is better put into a place where you have a lot of space in your base. So as an entrance to your base or maybe as a connecting tunnel. This tunnel kind of winds up having like a little bit of a lava lampy kind of effect where it's just really satisfying to watch. Now, let's get back to the practical as opposed to just the purely aesthetic. And I decided to design a kind of like DEFCON 1 like emergency chamber. This room fits everything you're going to need in a rather spacious area that creates a serious energy from all the red light. 
This design doesn't take up a lot of real estate, unlike the last design, so you'll be able to take this and include this into your base really, really easily, no matter where you need to throw it in. So we're going to start the room off by placing down the Plundra, the crafting bench, and the FM Tel all directly beside each other. Then we're going to place down a small Soviet pylon and place down the recycling station. And then on the other hand side, we're going to place down just one of the decorative boxes, but you could probably put down another Soviet small pylon as well as another crafting station if you need. After you got all of those in place, place down some small Soviet walls around the back outside, leaving a gap at the corners. Using the gap that we left in the corners, we're going to take our tall pylons and make an arrow out of them and do that for both sides. Then at the far end, we're going to take pylons and place two of them facing inwards and then put a door in between them. Then you're going to take tall walls and put them in behind the small walls that you've placed down with the flat end facing inwards. Then from the gate side, we are going to take the uh, tall walls and place them just along the outer pylon, again with the flat side facing inwards. So now we're going to place in our lights, and there's some tricky things that we're doing here in order to create this uh, red tunnel. So we're going to come off by a gap of two from the wall and follow that around the whole perimeter. Then we're going to wait and turn off our motor once it's facing the wall, change the color to danger red, and there you go. I find this tunnel works even better when you tilt the uh, lights on your tunnel downwards so that that way you can kind of have the light coming in along the floor and then once you get into the area all that light will be facing inwards kind of creating a much more full area of light. And once you've got your lights done, that's it. The whole room's done. This is really easy to put together and really creates a serious vibe. And on that note, what's more vibing than a dance floor? This was one of the first things that came to my mind once I saw these lights and this jukebox in Pontus's inventory a week ago, and the end result is pretty dang fantastic. If you want to make one of the most poppin' party bases, you're going to need some sort of a dance floor, and utilizing various structures to create a whole bunch of different shadows along the ground really kind of brings the whole concept together. Even though the lights don't currently save your settings, I designed this dance floor with that in mind so that all you would have to do is go around and set up your colors if you want to get this dance floor going. So you're going to start off with your jukebox. And, you know, might as well get it playing. And then next up, we're going to uh, take our spotlight, put our spotlight in behind it. And this is going to be where we're going to build our wall from. Then we're going to put a pylon in behind that guy just to kind of close things off a little bit. Take some walls and put walls on either side. Then we're going to take more tall pylons and make a little triangle at the end of each of these walls. Inside of that triangle is where we're going to be placing another one of our lights. Next up, we're going to go for the hunting towers, which we're going to be utilizing to cast the shadows all over this place. So you're going to want to set it up so that you have three on either side of the light, three, uh, three spots on either side of the light. And what you'll wind up with is a little bit of a square in the middle area. Here, let me show it off properly here. You'll wind up with a little bit of a square in the middle area just around your jukebox here. Now, as an aside, this is probably the most complicated thing to build from the day. But I want to know, do you dudes enjoy complicated to build things, or do you prefer the simple things? Let me know in the comments down below. I always get a little bit apprehensive about building complicated things here on my channel, uh, so your feedback on that would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, from where we left off, you're placing down two more tall walls on either end, and then blocking that off with a tall pillar. Then you're going to take two tall walls and place those down, place a door in between them, two more tall walls, and then you'll build the other side. 
We're using the flat ends of the walls on the inside to again kind of create a flush interior space for us to use. When you come to making the left hand wall, it's just a mirror of the right side wall. Get the lights in and the hunting stands and you're like two thirds of the way done. All right, so now we're going to finish up with the back end wall and we're just going to line along tall walls along the whole expanse here. Then we're going to go to our scaffolding and utilize uh, the ramps in order to have an upper area we can get to. Kind of similar to the jazz lounge, but a little bit more hidden away in the back here. Then we're going to take more of our scaffolding, just the typical scaffolding, and uh, place down two of them. And then we're going to line along the front here. Now for the final touch, the last little bit of lighting that we're going to put into the place that's going to serve as a huge blanket of color just kind of washing over the whole area. So we're going to put four lights in a row. And then it just is a matter of going about and setting up each of your lights to a different color. Once you've got them all set to a bunch of random colors, you wind up with a really awesome looking dance floor. With the large blanket of color that washes over the area, if you set those to a kind of pattern of color, you wind up with this really awesome, uh, you know, color pattern that just washes over the whole area. And with all of the shadows cast and everything like that, it just creates a real awesome ambience. I'm kind of hoping at some point that we'll be able to maybe put in some flooring as well. I think that that will be really awesome for the future of base building here in Generation Zero. And a dance floor would only be benefited by something like this. So there we go, my dudes. Five brand new unique lighting designs that you can utilize here in Generation Zero. Hopefully you dudes enjoyed. It's been a long while since I've made a base building video like this. So I might have been a little bit rusty with explaining things, but... Hopefully this still is helpful to you dudes with your brand new base building materials and the base support pack. But for now, stay awesome my dudes and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.